Oh, this is this is a nasty watch. This is a channel by people who know everything, the ins and outs of skins. Zippel, Epidemic, and Tea with Milk and Sugar. All big stones of the skins economy. Who are always ahead of the game. They know, they knew everything first about the 1.5 million dollar AK. Even some things that I can't mention right now. <laughs> some very fucked up shit happened, by the way, but it is what it is. Here we go. The forgotten collectibles of Counter-Strike. No idea what this means. Let's have a look. If you've ever considered buying a skin in Counter-Strike, you likely know that some skins go for astronomical amounts of money due to their collectability and status. Today, many skins can fetch tens of thousands, some hundreds of thousands, and a few select over a million dollars. But what about the ones that fell from grace? Collectibles that were once coveted and are now forgotten. These are the forgotten collectibles of Counter-Strike. Good editing. Counter-Strike has always had a That's my business partner, Zippel. Amazing job he's doing, no? Boss, boss, we own Skimbit together. Marketplace, we want to buy or sell skins. Shameless ad, skimbit.com, tuck. Driving skins community, starting on August 14th, 2013, with an arms deal update. The first of many Counter-Strike updates that would introduce skins into the virtual- Best update ever. Economy. With it came the Militia Collection, one of the map collections introduced alongside the now famous Weapon Case 1. Mostly famous for this. I, I have to say it right now, sorry, I will keep it short. The fact that they released skins with no updates after that, the skins still function the same now, 10 years after they released this update, right? When nobody else had a skin economy like this, they were the inventors of it and they never had to update it. The first case ever included the AK case hunt. Perfect amount of rarity, perfect amount of drop rates. The Statric Faction or AK Scar Pattern, it's, it exists once after 10 years. How perfect is that? The fact that patterns are there, floats, skin ID, uh, skins itself, it is perfect. They nailed it. Whoever invented Seer skins had it perfect from the start. You are a genius. You are a genius. You may be, to me, you're one of the craziest people on this planet. To me, you're the f you're the, who invented the light bulb? Edison. You're the Edison to me, literally, of this age. And I mean that. The AK case hard in 661 attempts. Also, without this update, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Thank you. During I owe this you. time period, map collection skins could only be obtained through in-game drops and trade-up contracts. Watch Dragon War drop confirm. It's perfect. Dude, I got it, I got it, I got it. No, I watch skin drop, Dragon War. Oh my god! Oh. This made collections like Militia especially intriguing. Combine this with the fact that all of its skins were capped at Factory New 0.06, this resulted in these Factory New skins being astonishingly rare, particularly during the early days of Counter-Strike's life. Yeah. Dude. In this era, neither regular players nor collectors were aware of float values as they are today. <laughs> Guys, sorry, but when it's about a topic like this, can I, can I stop the video and yap a little bit about the past? Back in the day, you didn't have a chance to look at floats. It, you only knew whether it was faction new, minimal wear, field tested, and so on. And you were wondering, why is this, why is this one looking so clean? You had no idea, you just, you just took it as granted. You took it as granted that some are cleaner as others, uh, some faction news. You had, there were no databases. You had to look in the game file to find out the code. There was no way to see it in the game. They added that very late. Bruder. <clears throat> Back in the day, everyone was so clueless. These values. That's why trade ups as well. You couldn't adjust trade ups so that you had perfectly a faction new by adding in seven minimal wares, three faction news to get the float above faction new. Nobody had any idea. When floats came out and people finally realized that, that this was a thing, trade ups got changed, collecting got changed. Bruder. Weren't displayed in game and were only called on to by a select secretive group of individuals seeking to take advantage of the systems in place. But more on that later. Now, like I said, players were not aware of float values, yeah. which laid the foundation for skins like the M4A4 Modern Hunter and Faction New to become a top tier collectible. Today, we might look at this skin and agree it looks terrible. But back then, the options were very limited and due to its extreme rarity, it was actually at one point in time, the most expensive gun skin in the game. Guys, back in the day, guess what the boss knife was? Nowadays, if somebody has an M9 Sapphire, oh my God, M9 Sapphire, M9 Sapphire. Back in the day, Karambit Fate, Crimson Web, Slaughter. There were so many Slaughter collectors because it was, it was one of the only knives so you had a, a rare pattern. Blue Gems weren't even that crazy. Blue Gems got very popular much later on. 
you had number one Blue Jams top tier patterns getting thrown around for like for a thousand bucks or something. Now they're they're hundreds of thousands. Bruder, it was a very, very different time. In May 2014, this all changed. Valve released an interesting update, including this patch note. The trade-up contract no longer restricts items to a single collection. In exchange for 10 items of identical quality, the trade-up contract provides one item of the next highest quality from a collection of one of the items provided. Game changer. The patch note that would change the shape of the Counter-Strike ecosystem forever. This update facilitated the possibility for the first time in the game's history to obtain skins like the M4 One Hunter in factory new condition. Because of the fact you could now include other collections in trade-ups. Beforehand, had a player collected the 10 lowest float blue skins in the Militia collection and used them in a trade-up, it would have resulted in a 0.1 minimal wear Modern Hunter. Yikes. Making the Modern Hunter and factory new obtainable strictly through in-game drops, which is why only eight of them ever existed. Now, after this update, anyone could attempt a trade-up to hit the M4 Mountain Hunter by mixing collections and utilizing the non-cap skins, such as the Acid Fate Scout. With this, as players gradually familiarize themselves with these new trade-up mechanics and the possibilities that could arise from them, the once-beloved Mountain Hunter fell from grace. From being the most expensive gun skin in the game at around a thousand bucks, to off. actually being one of the few skins you would have lost money on if you held from back then until now. Today, its price is only $250. While the Modern Hunter is a prime example of a forgotten collectible, it's actually a non-isolated incident. What's, what else is there going to be? Star Trek Faction of Fire Serpent, maybe? In 2013, Why the new collection was one of the other map collections released alongside Militia, Ooh. which brought the first vibrant colored pistols to Counter-Strike the P250 and Tech 9 nuclear threat. And just like most of the early skins in the game, they were float capped at 0.6. Much like the modern hunter skins in the Militia collection, the Tech 9 and P250 nuclear threat quickly became highly collectible in factory nuke. Guys, a, a dream of mine would be to somehow speak to the guy who came up with this. Who was it? We have no idea, right? We know that somebody worked on skins, creating them, who worked for the Greek government. Greek gov Greek isn't dead, right? So, but the skins he got right. The skins he nailed. I wonder if it was that guy, or if he joined later on. It was the Greek economy guy who started working for, for, for Valve's, like, who started setting up this. I remember that. I don't know if he was the guy for everything, though, who came up with floats, patterns. My days condition due to the extreme rarity that would be a dream of mine to talk to that person bro i would have so many questions and the limited variety of colorful skins available during that era of the game the status of owning a factory new nuclear threat pistol gradually started to fade with the introduction of new trade-up contracts much like what happened with the modern hunter in fact if you look at a video from x skillet eight years ago you'll notice that the current price of factory new nuclear threats is almost identical to Damn. today's prices even after the introduction of mixed collection trade-ups, the player base's knowledge of what one might refer to as the float math was non-existent. There were no programs to quickly calculate the outcome of your trade-up. Most people just chucked 10 skins into a contract and prayed for a good condition. Unlike today, where anyone can trade up to a skin with a specific float down. Is it better to sometimes be clueless, to be in the dark? Back then, you did a trade-up, you didn't know how it worked. You couldn't just Google anything. Back then, you were stuck in a video game, Assassin's Creed. All of a sudden, you have a mission, you're stuck. Nowadays, you Google it, you instantly do it. You look up the best build for Elden Ring, suck, you beat the boss's first try. Back in the day, you figured it out. You asked friends who played the same game. I could cry right now. Jesus, good times back then. The ones who know, know, bro. When video games, you were stuck, you asked your homies, how the hell did you do this? You invite him, he takes care of the mission. My days. Down to the very last decimal. Nowadays, everything accessible. This meant that for that period, Good times. approximately nine months, a small handful of people were secretively trading up to rare and high in demand factory new skins such as the Emerald Dragon, Fire Serpent, Nuclear Threats, Modern Hunters, and the Bulldozer. There's one major problem though. The collectability of these skins were tied directly to their scarcity. In fact, skins like the MP9 Bulldozer and factory new were so rare that even if you were ready to pay top Bro. dollar for it, nobody would sell it. So you can imagine what happened when they suddenly started to appear in larger numbers. 
This small group of people who front brand float cap trade ups found a unique opportunity to make a large amount of money, especially relative. Jackpot. Imagine you're the guy that figures out the first that they are floats and you figure out how to do a trade up so you get the fact you know, you edge it. You get the perfect trade up and you always profit. Oh my god, bro. Relative to back then. They had to be careful about the pace of which. They Jesus was one of them who abused trade ups a lot. He always keeps saying that. Big props to him. He he was he was ahead of his game. I don't think he's talking about this though. He figured out something else. He figured out, or he was one of the first people to figure out how trade ups work. A lot of people will still don't know this probably in the chat. If you put ten skins inside, right, into a trade up, you put five pinks from one collection, five pinks from another collection. The one collection has one red. Above it. There are collections that have one red, right? Above it. Like the P90 Cold Blooded. And there's other collections where they have two reds. All the newer case, kilowatt case. You take a pink, there's two reds. There's the AK Inheritance, there's the there's the uh, there's the orb, right? Each of these reds is counts as one outcome. So the collection, the filler collection you call it, right? Which only has one outcome, the P90 Cold Blooded, for example, where you can get only the SSG, right? Uh, blood, in the, blood in the water. That counts as only one entry into the into the pot for the trade up. Yeah. So if you if you put those fillers in with only one out, red outcome in the other collection where you're trying to hit, you know, much higher odds than if you put in other other pings where there you have you have two options on top. It all it was always for the longest time people thought I put five in of this, five in of this, it's a 50-50. No, it's not. And Jesus was one of the first to figure that out. He made bank. They were adding these otherwise rare and incredible skins to the game. If these skins were added in large quantities within a short time span, collectors would figure it out and prices would crash relatively quickly. Yeah. Ultimately though, their methods didn't really stay hidden, which resulted in the direct downfall of these collectibles. What we also find pretty interesting are the souvenir versions of these skins. Once upon a time, these souvenir skins were highly sought after collectibles. If we take a look at the first sale of the earliest Unbox one in 2017, we can see that the P250 went for $4,000 at the time. Oh my. To put this into perspective, a Dragon Lord was around $1,500 <laughs> and a Titan Holo was around $3,000. Nowadays, these items fetch $10,000 and $70,000 respectively, which is pretty insane considering one of these speed of 50s outpriced both of them at this point in time. Wow. What's also pretty crazy is the fact that only two in total have been unboxed since the original new collection was replaced. And this guy owns it. What did I do with this guy? Wait. This guy has like eight Iba powers, by the way. I did something with this guy. Did I do a trade with him? I think I did a big old trade with this guy. One of my biggest trade. Am I tripping? Did I help him sell his IBPs or something? Something happened with this guy. But it was so long ago, I forgot. Scheiße. Based by its counterpart. Usually I have the brain of an elephant. I, uh, I would love to know right now. Are you in the chat right now? Message me, bro. Message me. Look at his profile. For what? The 2018 new collection. Chat Inwell, are not there. 2018. It meant that most likely only two of these elusive Peter 50s in faction new would I have to check. I swear he has like 15 M4 Alpha holes. I have to check. Unless he sold them. There he is. What was it about this guy? What was it about this guy? I swear this guy reached out to me and wanted something or something. Yeah. Where are the other powers though, huh? Yeah, he still has them. He still has them. What did I do with him? Wait, chat, wait. I can't remember. Nah, this is pissing me off. Why do I forget? I never forget things ever. Okay, that's a lie. <laughs> Scheiße, it's lost. It's lost. Whatever exists. Bo I message him right now. I message him right now. I need to know. Yo, on a pixel here. What did we do again? You asked me for something, no? Did we trade? Or I stand on a hose right now. I'm mad, bro. I wish he was online. Last time online when? Two weeks ago. He may have died. Both of which were open in this 2017 time period where the game received a significant spike in players, both of which are now owned by an OG collector known as I Don't. What? We're open in this 2017 time period, where the game received a significant spike in players, both of which are now owned by an OG collector known as I Don't. Mm. Today, the most recent sales of these Pizza 50s are in the $800 to $1,700 price range. Oh, wow. So it's extremely fair to argue that these skins have lost a significant portion of their relevancy. This is the same for the Tech 9 counterpart, which is in a similar tier of rarity and price. Some niche collectors may also remember the All-Star skins, which stemmed from one single match in a single major. 
Max Skillet love these. Max Skillet, if you know, you know. Sometimes I mention his name here and there. I know for some people it is aware, but he was originally the one who got me interested into skins together with Ruffle Monster and Tea with Milk and Sugar. It just is what it is. If I want to say something, I say it. He made a whole collection of... He tried to get what was the chat. The new collection, full all-stars, right? And I don't know if he completed it. He was always missing one skin. I, I don't remember if he ever completed it. There was one skin that he was missing, I think. I may be wrong though. And it featured famous players which at the never, time, like which Simple, never Hiko, got dropped. and Shroud. When you include the appearance of the All-Star sticks themselves, which are incredibly unique compared to anything we've seen both in the past and the present, you'll get a very previously collectible piece of Counter-Strike history. Oh, they've still been- It was the only time where they did souvenirs for a show match. Show match souvenirs. Brought up by collectors over time, you can't help but wonder why this could have happened. And if nuclear threats have retained their relevancy today, what would be their price? Had Valve just gone another way? Our thinking is that since the base nuclear threats were more accessible, it set them on a long-term downtrend which indirectly impacted the souvenir's desirability over time. Along with that, collectors would also have to deal with updates that Valve did later for souvenirs. Removal of signature stickers and allowing once desirable team gold stickers to be unboxed flatline desirability for a majority of souvenirs in general. Once you factor in the more vibrant and eye-catching skins that were added in future collections, it becomes much more clear as to why one of the earliest flex items in Counter-Strike completely fell off. Souvenirs were so goddamn cool. Boys, you had gold stickers on the souvenirs, and you could only get them on the souvenirs. Foils. Katowice foils exist, but you can only get them on the souvenirs. Non-applicable stickers. Nowadays, what is it? Nowadays, first of all, souvenir packages are not limited at all. You can just buy them unlimited, right? For $2 or whatever it is. Back in the day, you had to watch the major and stuff. They changed that and they changed how souvenirs work, bro. No more MVP. Now it's a map coin sticker. Two teams. You can buy the stickers for five bucks on the market. GG, GG. Souvenir collecting is not what it used to be no more. There is no souvenir collecting anymore. I said it, bro. It used to be so nice, man. So unique. So much uniqueness. Best position, Nico Gold, one of one, suck. Now, yeah, map coin sticker on scope, nice. How many exist? 500, let's go. Schade, 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 schade. Because they make money with gold stickers, I guess, right? Is that the reason why they got rid of it? I guess. But at least come up with a new, like, with a new type of souvenir sticker, right? Which, I don't know, make it unique to for the souvenirs. I don't know. I'm sad, The trade-up updates effect also rippled beyond just map collection skins. It even affected some of the original case collection skins in the game. The primary example of this is the Stature Faction new Emerald Dragon P90. There was a fairly large period in time where you literally could not obtain this P90 from collectors. Same goes for skins like the MP9 Bulldozer. There were just none of them listed on the Steam market. None listed on third-party marketplaces, and at the time, it seemed like the only way to get them was so to Zippel, buy them from Zippel. a collector. Zippel, we, we own Skinbit. Why are you showing different marketplace? <laughs> Bro, come on, G. Yo, this is this chat suck. You skip the screenshot. Habibi. Listed on third party marketplaces. Nah, and at the time, it seemed like the only way to Habibi. get them was to pry them from a collector's <laughs> cold dead hands. This all changed after this trade up. Who update. edited this? They lost the scarcity and therefore a vast majority of their collectability. And of course, the price rapidly reflected this. I mean, take a look at the Stature Faction New Blood in the Water, which is another case skin. It traded for $3,000 when the Dragon Lord only fetched half. Nowadays, this thing doesn't even fetch 10% of that. Now, while that concludes the infamous trade up updates, that's only the beginning of forgotten collectibles in the grand scheme of things. Back in the early days of CSGO, the market was on the edge of a significant transformation. Enter the Chroma One case. This case released in January 2015 and its effects would mark a crucial moment in Counter-Strike's ecosystem. Shortly after its release, the gambling craze began. Taking a look at some of the earliest gambling sites created, we can actually see that a majority of their social media accounts were made mainly within three months of this update. Wow. What followed was these sites gaining massive relevancy, particularly on Twitch. Massive. Baby, 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 baby. Yes, 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 we will, we will, we will. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> done on a case site. I remember watching this live. Hey, young me watching Max Skillet, getting to learn stuff about skins, being completely hooked. I was eating this up like cereal, bro. What the hell? Nowadays, it, I feel so stupid. How blind was I? 
this is all fake. Did the people back in the day, the 25-year-olds, did they know? Because nowadays it's the most obvious stuff, all of the stuff. Nowadays you see someone on the side, yeah, they bet a thousand bucks, okay, they ask for a refill next thing. Zack, it's not like, even if it is their money, yeah, they just ask for a refill. It's, it's here scambling as always, not like, you know? Bro, I, sw I swear, I, was it because I'm young? I was so, I was so locked into this, bro. Jesus. Look at this guy, by the way. Look who, who is in the jackpot. Delicious milk. This guy. If you're into TFT, you know him. Mm -mm. Bang. He's a popular streamer nowadays. Back then, he was a guy who flipped odds on uh, CSGO Lounge. He was doing uh, uh, bet flipping, I think it's... I, I don't know the professional word. What he did was he bet a lot himself on one team that was not favored to win, okay? Let's say face against Big Clan. Big Clan, not favored to win. He puts all his money onto Big Clan. What does the average guy, what does the 15-year-old kid do? Sees crazy odds on Face Clan, thinks, oh my god, this is free money. Face Clan is gonna win this easily. They're the much better team. Everyone goes all in on Face Clan. Now the odds, Face Clan, bigger, bigger, bigger bets. What does he do? Take his bets, switches it over. I don't know, some, some like, uh, you know what I mean? Like he made people bet on a team and then he switched his bet last minute. Something like, I don't, I don't know if I explained it right, but you get the gist, right? You get the gist. I don't, I think I explained this wrong, wrong example. But you know what I mean? Like he switched his bet last second. It's illegal, hey, CSGO Lounge. Back then, bro. Who, who's gonna stop him, huh? Who's gonna stop him, Kerr? Who's gonna stop him, bro? Valve? Lol. That was him, bro. That was him. Pretty much stopped CSGO. I play TFT at the moment. He still has a $100,000 inventory, by the way. Um, I asked him about it. Like, this, these are still CSGO launch winnings. Look, back in the day, this was called a max bet. This was like max payout as one item. Look how many he has. This is like 100k. He has Katowice skins, everything. All, all from CSGO launch. And it's, it's, nowadays, like, he made so much money with it, he doesn't care about it. And look, now successful... TFT streamer. I think one of the biggest TFT streamers. It's like crazy views. What, what happened with all the people in CS uh, uh, skins? Rofa Monster was, was, was insane with skins, right? One of, one of the OGs. Now uh, he was doing sneakers, reselling and stuff, shoes with, with bots and stuff, like everything. I don't know. Crazy how, how everyone like evolved. Oh, we will, we will. Stop it. Yeah. I've ever done on a case site, ever. It's... Bro. It better be my dad. Motion sickness happening. <laughs> There's one lore, two lore, oh, three lore, four, five. You know what stream? I bet you're all gonna be happy. <laughs> yeah, as well. I don't even know that Soda did it as well. <laughs> what the fuck? But maybe this was not a sponsor. The thing is, back in the day, like everyone was doing this. I, I don't think that everyone was sponsored at that point because it was literally. I, I think it was a thing where you want views on Twitch, you gamble and see us go. Like on these sites, that was literally the meta. If you know, you know. This is how. Oh my god, I hate green. Green. If I lose. This is fucking 23! Skins hadn't just gotten a massive visual upgrade with the introduction of skins like sapphires and rubies. They got a massive financial upgrade as well because skins actually became, well, casino chips. It was less about what knives and niche patterns you had on those knives and more about how many of these knives you had. These were the days where you'd see big streamers with 40 Doppler knives just constantly cycling in and out of their inventories, rapidly betting on jackpots and coin flips and whatever else they could for the entertainment of others. And while we love to say that the fall off of OG knives is an interesting parallel to the real world, you know, new shiny thing comes out, an old less shiny thing goes out of style, the reality is it was massively compounded by this fever of gambling. It was quite the spectacle in hindsight, but it's felt a deep fall off for some of the OG collectible dives in the game, and most of which would never recover. Slaughter. It's time to address the biggest forgotten collectible mm. in CSGO's history, and there's no arguing. When we get to 2018, Crimson Web Knives reigned as kings of high-end collecting, Wow. particularly M9 and Karambits. As Satrak Factory knew, M9 Crimson Web, we sent you back $20,000. Today, it's half that. Owning a Star Trek Factory new M9 Crimson Web back then would set you apart as one of the top, top collectors. Today, it would merely be seen as an illiquid knife that nobody Loser. You only have Star Trek Factory new M9 Crimson Web? What? Get a job, buddy. What the hell? Maybe McDonald's cut. Wants. To really understand Star how Trek Crimson Web lost Crimson their Web? high relevancy, That's it? we have to talk about a particularly Star Trek Factory new Crimson Web with perfect webbing and on top of the Oh my god. 
This knife, people already always called this the $100,000 knife. Static Factionu web right in the middle. Perfect. And I think it sold somewhat recently. Yeah. Like a year ago or something. And I think it fetched like 50K or something. Like it's, it also fell off. Still crazy though. Still crazy though. Well, that or less, le 40K or something. I can't remember. It's non duped. This was a big deal at the time due to all the duping scandals. But that's for another discussion. Oh, 20K? For a I can't remember. Another video. When looking at the Karambit, we see that this knife sold for $40,000 oh. in its prime. Once considered the ultimate peak of high-end collecting. In recent years, it has not gotten much attention, and its last noted sale was $20,000. Okay, okay, not the 100K. 40K. It was a 50K knife or something, and then it sold for 40K and then 20K. Now, the real crazy here actually isn't the 50% drop in price. It's when we take a look at other items similar to its price. Cheap, by the way, no? Cheap. Is this, is, is this a gem? Look, look at the... the, the, the Star Trek Factory New? Centered web. Bruder. Best pattern? Star Trek Factory New on a knife that is rare on Factory New. There's, there's only a couple of Star Trek Factory New ones. Lots of duped ones. Unduped centered web. You're out of touch? I'm comparing it to other things that are completely out of touch in the CS fucking world. Everything is out of touch. I'm comparing the out of touch against the out of touch, okay? And this is less out of touch, I think. Because this is absolutely insane. 20k. People are buying nowadays what? Fucking Butterfly Emerald. How much is it? Fucking 10k or something? This is double for the most... One of the... Back in the day, this was THE knife. Double for that? We see that this knife sold for 40,000... Hundreds of sapphires exist. Hundreds of emeralds. Thousands. This is a one of one. Thousand dollars in its prime. Once considered the ultimate peak of high-end collecting. Crazy. In recent years, it has not gotten much attention, and its last noted sale was twenty thousand dollars. Now the real crazy here actually isn't the fifty percent drop in price. It's when we take a look at other items similar to its price ranges from that time period. And these items make everything very clear. Let's talk about the Stat Track Minimal Wear Six Six One AK Case Hardened with four Titan Hollows. And the souvenir factory new dragon law. Guys, I sold a souvenir orb dragon law for five thousand dollars. I bought one like a year ago, same condition, fifty thousand dollars. I had to pay ten x to get that same skin. Blue gems even much crazier. Watch this. Going off sales at the time, the dragon law would have set you back around eighteen thousand dollars, while the AK back then would have been thirty-seven thousand dollars. Today, the Dragon Lore is worth $450,000 and the AK is worth somewhere in the range Thank of 400000 to half a million dollars. This means that the number one most collectible knife in the game lost value against almost every other item in the game. Even the most basic knives did 10 to 20x from then until now. But why? Why did specific old collectibles become forgotten? Well, the answer to that becomes pretty clear once you look at the release date for CSGO in China. Mm. China! Dude, I remember when the Chinese scene started to come in, they started buying everything. Dude, all collectors, all of a sudden, items that you couldn't sell that easily, offer here, offer there. You had a buyout on your AK, you couldn't sell it for half, half a year. Chinese collector, okay. Suck, done deal. Crazy, crazy, crazy. In September crazy. 2017, the Perfect World version of CSGO released. This marked the most significant event in the history of CSGO items economy. While some may argue that the long-term effects of CS2 may be even bigger, currently, this event remains the most significant. Yeah. Over time, once Chinese collectors came into the game, they picked out what they liked. They stayed away from items like stat truck knives because, well, stat truck knives have more scratches than non stat truck knives. Whereas in the past, stat truck knives were actually desired and more expensive than regular knives. And they gravitated towards flawless looking items no dark spots, Doppler gems, the highest tier blue gems, amongst other items like Katowice 2014 hollows and crafts. The I feel stupid now thinking back about it. Do you know what, what, what would have been the best play? ever seeing the chinese everyone coming in and them especially liking blue gems karambit pattern index eight 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 boys to all my chinese people in the chat the luckiest number considered in china is eight this is their luckiest number
And this used to be a one of one. Minimal wear, Karambit case Sarden pattern 888. Now look at this pattern. And keep in mind that they did like blue gems. And this sold, I, I'll tell you in a second for how much. Chinese guy bought it. Look at the play side. Pattern 888. The luckiest number in Chinese culture. And it's a full blue blue gem play side. Bruder. This is a knife. Like, you, there will be a guy, a Chinese collector, coming to you at one point that wants this. And that's exactly what happened. I feel stupid for not having have made that play. That is the pinnacle for a for, for Chinese collector, kinda. Low-key. I think the guy bought it for... She talked in an interview with Sparkles about it, I think. Um, or what, in, in, who was it? It was Nate King, I think. This one. My most this is the guy. Expensive item is the carpet. The pattern is 888. It's one of one. There's a little story about that because you know 888 in Chinese is mean get more money, money, and more money. And my parents they think that 888 is a very good lucky number. And so I asked them, about this is nice. The pattern is 888, and I think it can bring some luck to me. And my mom just said, okay, no, it's fine. You just buy it. even that costs 100,000 euros. No Next problem. up, I ask them. No problem. Lucky number. It will come back at the end. That's a worthful investment. 100k, that's it? 100k, that's it? Who owns the Battle Scout one? I forgot about this one. Please don't be Chinese. Maybe I buy it. <gasps> when did this get unboxed? Long time ago. What? One year ago. <sighs> Loki, want this, bro. How is this looking game? How much would Battle Scout be? 15k? Chinese people don't like Battle Scout Blue Gems. Oh, it looks quite rough. The corner is grayed out, bro. That's not good. I don't know. The new gen collectors at the time didn't like crimson webs because of all the wear they exhibited. Same goes for night knives and ultraviolet knives, mm. which were also considered extremely high-end due to their immense rarity and despite that, still ended up in the same boat as crimson web knives due to the simple lack of demand. The CS economy is just as much of an attention economy as it is a financial one. And when Buff, which is the biggest marketplace in the world, doesn't add Slaughter knife patterns, for instance, people just forget about them. He's right. And little niche things fade away into irrelevancy. Ultimately, while China's influence on the skin economy provides a decent explanation as to why skins gained or lost popularity, it's still hard to fully understand how, especially the Stat Track Factory new M9 and Karambit Crimson webs, have faced what you could even call collectible extinction. These particular knives became liquid items that were just dumped on generic trading platforms and lost every bit of collectible status they once had. Bro, that edit is deep, bro. I'm about to tear up. Look at this, bro. What time does to collect collecting, CS collecting, look. New M9 look, in Crimson from these unique Crimson webs. What you could even call collectible Low float MP9 bulldozer, M Fortunato into shiny gems, M for Howl. Let me flex on these kids. And lost every bit of collectible No more uniqueness. Sark, flashy, he has to be flashy. From the top collectibles in the game to something to every trader wants to avoid. Without question, these knives represent the biggest fall from grace of any CSGO collectible in the history of the game. The topic of forgotten collectibles is a rabbit hole in itself. We can make a separate video just discussing the rise and fall of slaughter knives. The shift from stat track knives being sought after to unwanted. Almost every topic in this video could be a video itself. The sad news is that we have to wrap this up and we will do so by covering some fun easter eggs. When the Howl became contraband, Valve actually ended up making some modifications to the Huntsman collection. Removing skins like the Orion but keeping them accessible through trade ups. Something nobody ever talks about is how certain blue skins got removed as well. There were three blue skins that flew under the radar. The CZ-75 Poison Dart, the Dual Bretta's Retribution, and the P90 Desert Warfare. These actually have surprisingly low supply and because they are blue skins, they can't be traded up to. They'll never be more coming into the game. Which in a way makes them sort of hidden contraband skins. Not officially, but really know sort of. Although these were never collectible and for that reason can't be classified as a forgotten collectible, they're definitely just forgotten. That's cool. Showcasing a story of a group of skins that were removed from the game, cannot be traded up to, has a limited supply, and yet nobody knows or talks about them. Additionally, there's some other forgotten items we wanted to just touch on, which we rediscovered during the making of this video. The gift package, the audience of participation parcel, and the palette of presents. These can be used one time to grant a random drop to someone in your lobby. 
Valve discontinued these for unknown reasons, and while still functional, they are mainly showcase pieces. They are not working in CS2? Lol, I remember Arrow bought one for a clip on YouTube um, and opened one in CSGO. CS2, they don't even work. For unknown reasons, and while still functional, they are mainly showcase pieces for those who wish to collect them. They're also not forgotten collectibles because they were just things people- They're trash, by the way. You can get, like, only trash from it. It's like collection skins. You pay what it's... They're so rare. You pay, like, 10 bucks and you get, like, 10 cents, like, 99% of the time bought in the shop to maybe give out to their friends but as a result of their rarity they're somewhat collectible today funnily enough to sum it all up our exploration of forgotten collectibles in csgo has covered a wide range of subjects from float cap souvenirs to crimson webs to hidden contraband gems and even old school gifts if we have learned anything in the making of this video it is that there is no singular reason for items losing their relevancy China's massive influence in the CS economy from 2017 and onwards, changes in how trade-ups work, newer and better looking skins being added. It's tough to pinpoint when, how and why certain skins lost their status. But hopefully, this video helped you gain more insight into the world of CSGO collectibles and its rich history. Thanks for watching. Man, what a video, bro. Guys, and the fact that we have this history, all of a sudden skins getting contraband, there's, there's stuff about people going to jail for scamming uh, for scamming their friends. There was a story about that in China. Valorant. Oh, yeah. Zed made the skin. Do -do ding, 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 ding. Cool, cool, cool. Sorry. Well, no need to pull, pull shots out here. Scheiße. <laughs> I don't know. I just... Hey, hey, hey. This is crazy. Wouldn't be so about to react to this and make a 25-minute YouTube video in approximately... <laughs> what? He called it! Wait, he edited his comment. Did he adjust it? You mean when he stops inting mid and presses the go live button? Nah, no, I didn't even edit it now. Bro! <laughs> I think longer than 25. Oh my god. Boys, smash the like button. Smash the subscribe button. Kiss the notification bell. What a beautiful, 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 beautiful video, bro.